What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? On the other side of the lens, I have a very special guest, my man, Cymec. He is a industry veteran, a triple A character artist, and he was the uh, lead uh, character artist for such titles as Ghost of Toshima. So uh, welcome to the show. I really appreciate you, you know, taking uh, time out of your busy schedule to right. basically join me and, you know, the other 3D modeling beast. Introduce yourself uh, quickly for those who uh, don't, might not, or actually might be new to you uh, from my channel. Hey man, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for inviting me first. That's very nice of you. I mean, you said pretty much everything. Introducing, I'm Siamak, I'm a character artist, a contractor character artist right now. Uh, I worked on Call of Duty World War II in the past. Uh, I worked on Ghost of Tsushima. I worked at Ubisoft, Activision, uh, Sony, and now I work as a contractor. I started my, basically this journey since 2002, when I started the first time playing with 3D applications, you know? And then I started working professionally in the industry, not game industry in, in the beginning. I started with the um, uh, commercials and visual effects mm -hmm. back in 2007. And then I, I worked on some toys and collectibles. And um, after that, a lot of VFX and commercials. I worked on a, a fully animated movie when I was in Dubai at the time. This is back in 2012, I guess, if I remember correctly. Yeah, a lot of commercials, a lot of uh, game cinematics and if, several games like Borderlands, Call of Duty and Ghost of Tsushima. What got you uh, started in the world of 3D? What, what was that initial interest that dragged you into the world of creating 3D art. Um, so this is uh, this goes back to 2001, 2002. Back in 2000, I bought my first computer. My my dad basically bought the first computer. Um, this is almost 21, 22 years ago. And then um, there was a trial version of 3D Studio Max, if I remember correctly. But before that, the reason I bought the computer was because I was playing games, I was watching movies, you know, uh, and so on. So after um, like it was, I think around 2001 or so that I uh, that I watched a bunch of movies, and then 2001, 2002, I started getting into 3D because of Matrix, you know, because of Lord of Dreams, and like everyone else back in the day, right? I mean, um, Toy Stories, uh, movies from Pixar, from uh, Disney, and so on. So I was like, I need to figure out how they make these movies or how the how the games are. Games were not as good as today but back back in the day right ps1 was pretty new and so on so yeah i started with that um when i got the computer i started learning playing with 3d studio max and um, back in the day in 2002 there was internet was pretty new mm -hmm. right and uh, i lived in iran at the time and uh, we didn't have access to a good internet we had to use a dial-up internet so i was <laughs> You know, the play was, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you I was mail. Uh, huh? You got mail, A good old AOL. <laughs> yes. So everything was new, Yahoo, Google, and so on. So back in the day, I was going into CG Society, um, mm. CG Talk, CG Society, the website to to check out 3D artwork to get familiar with with 3D. And a friend of mine invited me to to his place. They were trying to make a movie at the time it's like it's funny when i think about it because it was so uh, you know like basic basically yeah, it wasn't anything crazy but for us was something big right right i mean we wanted to try to do something and so over there a uh, i got familiar with a guy he told me use maya and then i started using maya and uh you know zbrush came out i started playing with zbrush a bit and then i realized oh this is actually amazing for a sculpting right i, I mm -hmm. could sculpt in in computer without clay or anything like that because i like to draw i never I, I never did any sculpting by hand back in the day and uh you know i was kind of limited i didn't have access to any you know uh, expensive tools or computers or things like that so zbrush came out and i started using zbrush yeah i remember actually at the time when zbrush came out i was playing with it and um, everything was too high res, and I was like, "How can you take these models and make any sort of uh, animation, uh, like anything to to be mm -hmm. animated, anything for games?" And time goes on, and then 2007, I um, 
basically because I wanted to move out of Iran. I wanted to go to, uh, to a place where I can, uh, you know, work with bigger companies and uh, build my life with, with what I want to do, basically, which is uh, which was at the time and it still is uh, character art and teaching and things like that. Uh, at the time, I wasn't teaching. Now I'm teaching. But yeah, so you know, 2007. I remember I went to Dubai with about a thousand dollar or less in my pocket, just to move out of the country. You know, to go somewhere mm -hmm. uh, to make a living for myself. And then I searched for work. After three months, I got a bunch of um, freelance work. Uh, a company gave me a test. They said if you do a car door, we will hire. We will give you more work, or maybe we will hire you. Mm -hmm. And I took this test and I took it home <laughs> and I made the whole car in like five, six days. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was really desperate to get the job. So I did this and uh, I delivered it. I took it back to them. And at the time, I remember I was putting it on a USB drive or writing it into a disk, taking it to, to the client. And then they saw it. They, they paid me like $1,100 or something like that. And I was like, wow, I got paid for a test, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And then time goes on. Um, I had to go back to my country because I couldn't find a job. They didn't hire me. Then I, I didn't want to stay there. So I came back again with another, like a visit tourist visa. I went back to Dubai. My friends were there. And, uh, you know, second time that I went back, uh, there was no work, nothing. I was just taking a big risk. Uh, either I would lose everything or I would just make it work, right? And, um, what happened is in the middle of the night, um, the landlord of my friend kicked every, all of us out because we were like three, four people in one bedroom, <laughs> sleeping in one bedroom. <laughs> so we got kicked out in the middle of the night at uh, 12 a.m. and we had to search for a place to find a place to sleep. So we finally did that. And I remember at the time, I think it was around Christmas 2008, end of 2007. So. I uh, I stayed there and all of my friends, because they worked there, they went on vacation, you know, to different countries. And I was alone in the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? Like there was n nothing around in, in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for two weeks I was alone and um, I didn't know what to do. It was really hard and I decided to go back. I went back to, to Iran again and I sat down in uh, my room. I locked myself in the room basically. I just wanted to find a way to, to get out, right? To, to go to a better place. And I started using ZBrush Tree, which made it easier to make characters with it. And uh, because I started with ZBrush 2, if I remember correctly, you couldn't do much with it basically. And uh, so yeah, ZBrush Tree, um, I used it and then I started making more sculpts. I actually have the images. I'll give it to you if you wanted to show it here. And just to fast forward, eventually after this, I um, got a job, same company that gave me a test. And I moved mm -hmm. to Dubai and things just started from there. I, I worked in over there for like a bunch of companies and then I freelanced for some time for like two years or so. And uh, then I, I started like thinking, how do I find a way to go to a better place, another country to, th uh, you know, to thrive and do more work, work with bigger studios, bigger projects. And I realized if I get into the game industry, that's the market for me. That's a, that's mm -hmm. gonna, uh, it's a rewarding market. At the time for me, it was like something big, right? And, um, you know, um, because I, I applied for many VFX and film companies and none of them were willing to basically get a visa for me. And, the, the game industry and film industry uh, is growing really fast now. At the time, it wasn't as big as now. I think maybe half the size or something like that. It was still hard to find a company to sponsor you. But then finally, after I started uh, you know, doing this stuff for games, I got, did a bunch of tests. I started making characters for game cinematics, you know, uh, making Thor for Smite Cinematic. I worked on Borderland as a freelancer. Eventually, I, I, got, a, I got an offer and I moved to U.S. And I worked for a company in Florida. Then, yeah, after that, I moved to, to San Francisco. I worked at Ubisoft. And then I worked at Sledgehammer in San Francisco. I was there for like three years or something like that. And then after that, I went, I came to Seattle, basically, right? Back in mm -hmm. 2017 to, to work on Ghost of Tsushima. Then back in 2019, I started working as an uh, independent contractor. Was learning 3D modeling in 3D Studio Max hard for you? How was that? Um 
learning curve like for you? Because there are, you know, two com two components when you learn is you're learning the software and then you're also learning all the concepts, right? So that first software, uh, you you like learning two things at once. So can you just take us through your, uh, I guess, your mindset when you were just learning uh, 3D modeling in Max? Yeah. So well, ma the software doesn't matter at all. That's what I can mm -hmm. tell you first. Like at the time, I thought, okay, I need to know how to be the best at 3D CD Max, or this is the application is what makes you mm -hmm. to become an artist or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I I tried to read books. That was the only thing, or help documents in 3D CD Max because there was no tutorials at the time, and I didn't have access to a good internet to buy any tutorials. There was mm -hmm. no no one. There was nothing basically. It was just all I could do: read some text and try stuff. So, you know, actually for, for like three, four years, nothing happened basically uh -huh. until like I got my hands on ZBrush and then ZBrush changed my life. ZBrush mm. was the one because I was able to focus on the art side and I study anatomy and study how to sculpt, look mm -hmm. at the traditional arts from the classic era t um, time, basically, you know, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, uh, however you want to name him. I, I call him Michelangelo. I don't know if <laughs> that's what you call him. Uh, you know, Bernini, Da Vinci, and all those amazing artists from the past, right? And uh, basically, ZBrush was the game changing for me, dude, because um, you could sculpt without worrying too much about uh, polygons or anything like that. And even now, 99% of the time, I actually don't use Maya much anymore for, for modeling or anything like that. And uh, um. But at the time, I had to use, uh, because um, I was considered uh, considering myself a 3D modeler, there was no character artist, right? So mm -hmm. I had to use Max, and then I switched to Maya. And um, I mean, saying hard, yeah, it was hard, because <laughs> I didn't have any materials to use, right? Now it's different. Now people can come to your channel, they can come to my channel, they can go to, you know, um, many different uh, websites to, to buy a tutorial for, like, I, even on YouTube, you can learn 3D Studio mm -hmm. Max or ZBrush or Maya on YouTube without paying a penny for any, any, you know, application, any any tutorials or workshops. The things that that helps with the workshop is if if you learn the fundamentals from someone or if you focus on the artistic side or the mindset game, you know, because uh, being mm -hmm. an artist uh, or doing this kind of work is is fun, but there's also a lot of um, soft skills that you need to learn it's like any other business you have to be ready to update yourself every day you know practice as much as you can be ready to take new knowledge all the time softwares change pipeline changes all the time it's not always the same so i mean but now it's much easier man like uh, you know you can use um, youtube to learn or buy a tutorial or or pay, pay for a workshop or mentorship and just learn much faster much easier you know, like like I always tell my students, you know, packages at the end of the day, they're, they're just a tool, you know, and, yeah. and you know, uh, they um, the, really what's the most important is the skill of the artist to use that tool properly. Right. And I, I think a lot of people do actually get stuck on, like you said, when this is something, especially when you begin, like you were saying, oh, I want to be the best yeah. 3D Studio Max user. But it's like once you're a great 3D artist, those skills carry over once you learn the, the new packages. So we're talking about software, um, and I want to think ahead a little bit because there's a lot of emerging technologies. Um, uh, Unreal actually came out with this uh, MetaHuman Creator demo, which is pretty mind-blowing, the things it could do with AI and just really how it's kind of prepackaged, uh, you know, served, ready to digest, ready to eat meal here, right? as far as um, characters in unbelievable humans, right? Because um, a meta-human uh, creator kind of pushed the envelope a little bit. There have been other um, types of like plugins and packages, but this one, uh, it's very, they're very, very uh, realistic. So as a character artist, what what is your, I guess, take on uh, developments like this? And more importantly, uh, anytime that like new technology like this comes out, uh, you know, do you think a package like meta-human creator could, will replace uh, 3D artist jobs to some degree. No, no, it's not. It's actually helpful. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a game studio, you uh, pretty much depends on the game, right? But pretty much, if you're making a realistic game with real real humans, uh, they they prefer to scan a person because they capture mm -hmm. all the 
facial expressions. They use facts to basically animate the, uh, the you know realistic faces, facial expression, and things like that. Not every studio is using Unreal Engine, right? Some uh, like every studio that I work with, they have their own their own engine, basically, right? They make their develop their own engine, have their own engine. Depends on which studio you're working with. And the meta humans, as far as I know, first of all, I'm not in a place to 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 basically say or judge what they are doing because um, Unreal is a big uh, Epic Games is a big, is a big company, right? And they know mm -hmm. what they're doing. So whatever I say might be wrong. And I don't know their plan, how they want, how they do things, and what they're, they're planning for this type of work, plugin or whatever. But uh, from seeing it, I I don't think um, it's actually not replacing artists. It's actually great for artists because if you're working in a studio, you will have to use the scans. If it's not an um, if it's not a you know a stylized type of game, you you'll have to use the scans um, to basically make the character. And um, Mental Human is only on Unreal Engine. So if you work for a company like I don't know uh, Activision, if they're not they're not using Unreal Engine, then you don't have access to this, right? It's limited, and it's only limited to making faces. And I think, from my experience, best case you can use it for secondary characters or um, background characters or crowd, basically, and um, or other projects. Like if you want to present something to a client, you want to have a virtual human talking about a project that you made and you want to present this to a company, you know, and so on, or or an, or a VR project and things like that. But as far as replacing artists, no, it's not going to happen. And, that's, and you know, the, 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 the reason I ask you that is because anytime these big uh, updates come out or these groundbreaking developments, um, th there was also a lot of talk when like um, ZBrush and auto auto retopology right started coming out and just auto retopology started coming into mind and other packages as well but you know anytime there's these uh, developments artists their initial uh you know their initial instinct or their guts like is this going to replace me right like i wanted just to get your take on it you know the problem is they're thinking too like ahead of everything you know so if you're not already in the industry you I mean, first of all, like if you want to become an artist, you shouldn't think about, am I going to be replaced or not? You know what I mean? It's it's your duty as an artist to, if you love what you're doing, and if this is exactly what you want to do, make characters for games or films or whatever, you have to be good enough or so good that they can't ignore you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the tools, these tools are actually good for for us. Like I, I when I saw them, like I wish I had. I was able to use this, you know, for in the past, basically, because mm -hmm. it's it's simplifying the tasks that you don't want to work on, and and I feel like that's why they made it. I don't know. I mean, I have no clue. I'm just like guessing, because mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of works that when you work in game industry, you may not enjoy doing, you know, topologizing the same head over and over, texturing yep. over and over. So making a package that can give you a lot of like um, different heads and stuff for different looking characters. It's an amazing thing. The only thing is it doesn't make um, armors, right? And it's not gonna, I don't know if it's gonna happen or not in the future. They, they will develop an AI, give him some images and it's gonna create armors with models and textures and everything. You don't mm -hmm. know, that's the future. But no, dude, I mean, I think uh, people are, um, you know, young artists are thinking ahead of the time or ahead of their journey. They're thinking too far into the future. That's why they're like, oh, I'm going to lose my job or I'm not going to get a job because, no, it's not going to happen. It's actually going to make your job easier. It's like not camera, bad. right? When the camera was invented, they said, oh, oil painting is not going to happen again and that's it. Uh, all the artists are going to get out of business. What happened? Oil painting, if you if you know how to do oil, oil painting, um, I mean, if you're a good, good artist, you can make a, a lot of like really good money. You can make a business out of it. It's not getting out of business, basically. I wanted to um, actually ask a question. You, you're very passionate about empowering 3D artists and a lot of your content, you know, go, it, it goes uh, along that narrative. Uh, and something you talk a lot about uh, or you have made content about is uh, artists charging the proper wage. So uh, in yeah. your opinion, uh, how much do you think artists should charge or what structure? I, I know when we talk about, you know, a specific money uh, amount, it can be kind of tricky since, you know, this is kind yeah. of a, 
a global professional at this point. Uh, but uh, what pricing structure uh, do you recommend artists that are just out there, you know, hustling and grinding and just getting to do freelance work or maybe just landing uh, their first roles in the studio? You know, what type of money should they be uh, seeking? Uh, first of all, I'm not a financial advisor, so <laughs> <laughs> I know because <laughs> these kind of things can get dangerous. <laughs> I said that in my videos too, so that's there. Uh, I mean, I'll, that's I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to add the little asterisks at the bottom, so <laughs> the disclaimer. Disclaimer, yes. But uh, dude, uh, for a starting, there is pretty much not much you can do, unless if you're really good. You know, mm -hmm. if you are sitting in your basement and just working hard, hustling for like three years, four years, and then you just come out of the dark and show that you have an amazing portfolio, no one has seen it before. That's a different scenario, right? But if you're just starting and you just want to learn and work at the same time, I mean, I can tell you my first job, I actually had to write uh, discs to make money so I can do 3D work, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. make uh, hard drive backups for people and things like that on DVDs uh, back in mm -hmm. 2003 or and something like that. But uh, when I charged my first, first freelance work, I didn't have any room to negotiate because I was in Iran and I, I needed money and I had to get into this market or at least try it out and figure out how I can work with clients in different countries. So Back in 2004, the first money I made from 3D was $100. For the whole project was $200. It took me like two, three months to make it at the time. Now, mm -hmm. now it's different. So if, if there, there, there are actually two ways. First of all, like you're either professional or you're not, right? You're just trying to get into the market. So if you work with a bunch of clients, you're gonna learn how to deal with these clients, how to charge them the money that you deserve. Because you, you get to, when they give you feedback, you, you get to hear them if you're doing a good work for production or not, right? So that gives you a better understanding of how you should come up with um, you know, pricing, how, how much you're worth. And also looking at the project, which, which company is this, how big it is, you know, how much can you help them? In the beginning, the best way is to basically test different prices. So if you can make a character for, for a game from start to finish and deliver AAA quality, I'm not even talking about PS5, Triple A quality of PS4, I mean, previous generation. I think one mistake people do is they are scared of asking for the right price. So if you feel like, okay, I worth $350 a day or $500 a day or $600 a day, you have to try it. You might get rejected. That happened to me many times. Like I lost many, many clients over the years, but I, I don't regret it because I worked with many, many good clients, many great companies over the years. I mean, I got rejected some a few times, but for with the big, bigger uh, companies, um, corporate businesses and stuff, I always got paid what I wanted to. You know what I mean? But the mistake I, I, I see that young artists do, they are scared of asking. They are like, if I ask this, they're gonna, can't, they're not gonna give me the job. So there's two ways. You either really need this work, so that's that's like a, a scenario that you don't have any room to negotiate, mm -hmm. right? Or um, you have some savings, you, or you're in a good situation. Uh, let's say you're you're trading stocks and making money, but you just want to become an artist too. In that case, if you don't need a project, you don't have to like just drop a price. If your if your work is good, right? If and you you will know if your work is good enough. You you can compare it uh, to to the industry standard. Mm -hmm. um, but and the more experience you have, the more you can you can charge. But I think. In the beginning, the start uh, money shouldn't be the main goal uh, for someone who is coming to the industry. Um, the goal should be to, you know, to figure out where you are standing, how, how good you are, talking to different companies and see their reaction. If no one is willing to hire you, then definitely you need to change something, right? Or if there are many companies that are willing to hire you, then you have a chance. You have a you have room to basically negotiate, right? One of the things I actually tell my students all the time is, if you tell a client, "Hey, um, my price is three hundred dollars a day, or this character, I'm going to charge you twenty thousand dollars," if they say, "Okay, good, let's do it," that means you're charging not you're not charging enough because they're not negotiating with you. 
Does it make sense? Yeah, oh, oh. yeah, it, 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 it makes sense. You, you, yeah, the, the art of negotiation is is pretty much where you say a number, I say a number, and then usually most people try to meet somewhere in the middle. So yeah, if 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 you're saying a number, then taking it, then you're probably not you, meeting yeah. in the middle with what they had in mind. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, you're prob you're most likely you're um, under the price they are they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. if, no, you know, that, especially that for salaries. Sense. You know, for salaries, I, I know like some people are getting paid like 30% less than what they should get paid. You know, mm. a, a good character artist, someone who is really good and understands what he's doing, can get up to like 180, $190,000 a year. Uh, mm. But I, I, I know the really good character artists, they're charging like 95, 100, 100, and they don't know how much to charge. And they're scared mm. of like um, changing their job or asking it you know another company to give them a different price you know if you have that's the thing like that's why usually in the past when i applied i applied to multiple companies or if, if companies reached out to me i responded to three of them because i wanted to have room to decide which one i want to choose to work with right mm -hmm. and and one of the things that people do i'm not a fan of this i'm not a fan of like i just want to work with this company or i want to work with that company I wanted to work in the game industry, but I wanted to work with a company, um, a good a good company, basically, if that makes sense. Someone mm -hmm. who understands my value, willing to pay what I'm worth, and uh, you know, good benefits uh, when I was full time, and um, how they be behave, you know, their their culture, the way they respect artists or not, and a lot of other factors, right? So oftentimes I hear people say, I want to work with this company and that's it. That's all my goal. That's my life goal. And I'm, I'm, like, I'm, la I'm laughing because <laughs> you, 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 you're so right. And they, they kind of, you know, especially students, I, I've noticed students get out of school, just, you know, uh, 3D artists, relatively new. They, they go from nothing and they're like, I want to work at Pixar or Blizzard, you know, like, you know, creme de la creme type of employers where the comp the talent and competition is fierce. and that's a mistake because and, look and, dude there are so many good companies out there so many mm -hmm. good good games they can work on why would you limit yourself to one company mm -hmm. right that's that's like saying that i want to buy this stock and that's it and i want it to grow to become rich you know and uh, it's just because you believe like that it may not happen you need to di diversify you're trying to reach out to multiple companies it's going to give you a better idea of the whole industry you know the no, culture but... how the what kind of people you want to deal with maybe you'll find a project that you will like more than what you're seeing at blizzard or activision you know or maybe you will uh, you want to work on call of duty as an example right you apply for like 10 companies and then you realize yeah call of duty is really exactly what i want to do if that makes sense. No, no that, that that makes uh, total sense. So we're, we're on the topic of artist wages and, you know, getting paid the proper amount. Uh, what is your thought on platforms or websites like Fiverr? And do you think they're destroying uh, artists' uh, no, pay or wages? No, they're not. I don't think they're doing anything. It's like saying, um, you know, it's like saying, what is your thought on um, uh I don't want to compare it like that, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Like, give me a car model, like, I don't know, Toyota Yaris, or uh, so do you think because of Toyota Yaris, Mercedes uh, AMG GT is going to get out of business? No, they're not. You know what I mean? It's a different market. The, and the, the, the reason I'm asking you this is because anytime we're, uh, and this is actually not only 3D artists, but graphic designers, there's almost like this hate towards the platform. I, I always see, a lot of people or a lot of artists, you know, kind of have that narrative of, you know, sites like Fiverr are kind of undercutting us because they, they, some people um, charge, you know, a certain amount. And I just wanted to get, I guess you're, you're very I, business minded and you're an yeah. artist. And I wanted to get kind of that insight from somebody like you. So dude, you know, um, here's the thing. I'm not a fan of um, charging small amount from these platforms i don't like it mm -hmm. i i don't think that's a good way because what it does to your brain it makes you undervalue yourself over time because the growth is gradual as a human being as an artist as a musician or whatever your profession is usually you cannot see your growth 
it happens over time. It's a process that happens over five years, six years, seven years, right? Mm -hmm. So majority of the time, you're not able to see your growth until you go back in time and compare yourself with six years ago. Or when you realize, oh, I'm getting more emails, what's going on? Like more companies are reaching out to me to hire me or Mm -hmm. I'm getting more freelance work. So working with platforms like that might actually give you the wrong idea about pricing your work as an artist. Because there is this misconception that artists have to starve or they can't make money. Because of technology, technology is making a lot of people rich. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. Helping a lot of people to make money and start businesses. It's having the same effect on artists. The only thing is like you need to decide which part of the, uh, you know, this is spectrum you want to be. Do you want to be a top-notch artist like doing, um, and there's no limit, right? You can't be the best artist. There's no perfection. There's no way that you can say, I am the best artist or I'm the best at this. The thing is, um, the industry is growing, right? Game industry is growing. So if you're a good artist, there is always a demand for good artists. But when you work with, um, you know, when you sell your tutorials for cheap or you're looking for a way to just do some some work to just make some small amount of money, like $5 on Fiverr, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to have a good uh, effect on your growth and on your mindset when it comes to the business side, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. It's no, gonna, that, that, yeah, that I'll, totally I'll makes sense. Example. Yeah, I'm going to give you an example. You know, um, a flea, uh, is it called a flea, the, the small insect that jumps? Yep, uh, yep, flea. You know, mm-hmm. If you put them in a jar, they're going to jump, hit the hit the ceiling of the, the door, right, the cap of the jar, and then after a few try, uh, trying a few times, they actually jump just close to that cap. They don't mm-hmm. hit the hit the cap anymore because they, they know that this is their limit. But that is not mm-hmm. their limit. That is the limit that um, the person that put this flea on the jar gave this flea, right? So if you if you remove the cap, it's going to jump, but it's not going to get out of the, the jar, if that makes sense. Because it's, no, that, throwing, this, that, that, yeah, it's yeah. throwing this insect that, hey, you can't jump more than this. Right. So charging a small amount of money or just accepting working with on cheap projects or basic projects forever, it's it's giving you this uh, mindset of this is what you can do as an artist. There's no limit. You can make as much as you want. You can scale it as much as you want. It depends on how you want to do it. Do you want to work in a studio? Do you want to just work in an outsourced studio? Do you want to um, just be a, a mid-level artist and only create art and don't you never want to do anything else you never want to take a risk right the more risk you take the more you uh, value yourself the more you try to learn the the better you get there is no there there are no limits but i think using these platforms as long as you're aware of it you're aware of like hey i have to charge five dollars for this project now right but this is not what i want to do in the future this is what i want to do now because i have to but my goal is to make two hundred thousand dollars as an artist in like six years, seven years, or I want to have my own outsource business or my own game, and um, enjoy doing what I what I do and make good money as well. No one should do this because of money, because you need to really enjoy and love what you do, right? Because it's a creative thing. I never thought that I can make money with this, but um, when I started making money, I was like, okay, this is good. I can live by doing what I want to do. So you shouldn't think about the money, but um, you have to, when I say you shouldn't think about the money, I mean, you shouldn't just do this job because you, you think that you can make a lot of money with it as a, as a game artist, right? How do I say it? Like, don't disconnect the financial side. You know, it's not cool to say, I don't care about the money. It's only putting you down because I have heard this people say, I don't care to care about the money and they get paid less than what they want to get paid, and then they start complaining. And then they say artists can make money. You know, it's your choice. It's, it's, I, I don't think it's, um, it's limited. But obviously, the more you make, the, the, I mean, um, your clients will be, you will have fewer clients, but the, the quality of the clients are going to be better because they want to have uh, a great artist with a, a great knowledge and experience. They pay the premium price for it. And mm-hmm. you you have you have the chance to work with this client for for a long time, you know, and the, you're sure that you're gonna get paid, right? 
there is a difference between someone who works at Tesla and another random company making a random car that you don't even know. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So no, the, that makes sense. That this, yeah, the person that works for Tesla is going to work probably longer, or there's a chance that this guy is going to, you know, make way more money or figure out a way to start his own business. It's all related. That's why I'm talking about this. They say uh, your success depends on the five um, people that are that you're surrounded you by, idea. right? Mm -hmm. And that's true. So if you only work with, if people are around you tell you, hey, you can't make more than this. This is Fiverr. You only can make money with this, or you only can sell your tutorial for five dollars or fifty dollars. That said, you can't sell it for more. That's what you can learn. There, I mean, dude, money is never not, has never been an issue. Money is not the problem. The the question is, what can you do to show that you deserve to get paid what you want to get paid, right? What can you do to to show that you can get paid? Um, to ask for like 125 or $200 an hour or $1,000 per day for a, for, a, for a project or more. I, I, I get it. You know, uh, it, it definitely, you know, makes sense. And I, I think to a lot of, you, you made a point earlier, which is very, very true is, um, you know, how sometimes that hunger can work against you because you're like so hungry and so desperate to just get work. Which is fine, that's part of life, right? But you have to yeah. keep in mind that there, there is no limit. There are no limits and you can grow. Mm. Fiverr, Fiverr is just, I mean, why did they make Fiverr? Because they knew there is this crowd of artists that they wanted to sell their work. They are not good at doing business. Their work is just good enough. It's not good for, I don't think you can find a professional character artist on Fiverr. I guarantee that 100%. Who's making AAA characters? You know what I mean? I, I it's um, different markets, right? I know the platform. I, I browse through it uh, just to see what other artists, uh, quality-wise. Um, I'm not sure. That's something that I, I'm. I'm have to test no, that no. out and make a video about it. But <laughs> uh, you, you know, it, it's 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 one of those things that you know sometimes you'll be surprised, you know, the talent of people. And then, uh, you know, just because somebody is not charging a certain amount doesn't mean that they're talented. So th there could be a huge, you know, talent pool. Or, or you could, you know, get, you could pay what you get for it. Or you could, you know, maybe yeah. not, you know, you somebody no, could I mean, definitely over deliver. The reality is the better you get. So knowledge gives you power, right? Knowledge makes you more confident. When you become more confident, you become more curious. You want to know more. You want to achieve more because now you're like, uh-huh, I can do this. What if I do that? What's going to happen? What if I read this book? Okay, maybe I can increase my price. Maybe I shouldn't work with um, on Fiverr. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's nothing wrong with Fiverr. It's just like it's giving an opportunity to a lot of people, like from really basic skills to a certain point, and then they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they jump from there. But uh, sooner or later, those who are good, I, I'm 100% sure there's no good like AAA character artist working on Fiverr. That's a guarantee. I'll tell you that. If it mm. was, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I know there's like you know graphic designers, video. Ed I saw good video editors, but they will find their mm. way once they figure out that they can make more money. That I think they're gonna get out of that. Platform. Something that I've seen on the platform is that now the 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 name Fiverr doesn't suit it that well because you could actually charge more. You know, you could actually have upgrades you want to deliver uh, quicker. So uh, at the end of the day, I just really think it's, you know, what type of service you're offering and how much time it, it, it's costing you. Um, but, you know, like like I said, you know, it could be a, a, a platform or opportunity for hunger artists to maybe, you know, get a little bit more experience or just try it out and get better, get oh, a little yeah, bit of money while they improve their skills. And I don't think the, the 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 platform is setting a price, right? Platform uh, doesn't tell you how much you. So that's no, the thing. It, it 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 doesn't set the price, but like something you alluded to earlier, if you know, anytime when you're in a marketplace, you you're kind of you got to kind of stay within those realms, right? So it is a lower cost, you know, alternative for work. I mean that that definitely is, even though the five dollar you know market is not the standard anymore because most charge a little bit more but you know I'm, I'm assuming you probably couldn't charge 300 a day to because that that's not really the audience of clients you know that that's there you know at the end i of think the day, i think fiverr is more like for i don't know if corporations are going to use fiverr 
I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm, um, um, I don't know much the, about it. Uh, um, Fiverr, um, as far as the, uh, the, the user base, it's usually, um, th there's actually all kinds of uh, companies, even to like creators, like smaller creators, people that are just starting businesses. That's usually like their bulk demographics of buyers or clients is people just starting out. You know, you, you want an ebook, you want something simple. You just, you know, you're not going to be most likely like a triple A studio hiring on Fiverr. But if you're like an indie developer, if you need some code or, you know, why not? That, that's usually kind of that, that demographic that, that looks for work yeah, in those sites. I mean, I don't have anything against Fiverr because I never used it and I don't know anything much about it. But Mike, uh, basically what I'm trying to say, the message that I'm trying to send is uh, learn how to increase your knowledge and your confidence so you can increase your price and learn how to negotiate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to figure out what you're worth really. And usually you will know that when others tell you, oh, you're doing a great job. You always hear this. You, you're doing a great job. You know what? This is amazing. Or you, you work fast and then, um, you know, you do something, and then the client says, "Oh, this is this was fast. I thought it's going to take two weeks. You finished it in in four days, right? That increases mm -hmm. your price immediately. Because imagine this: like if you are hiring someone, charging, I'm going to say four hundred dollars a day for two weeks, and if you can finish the same project in a week for four hundred, I mean, um, should you get less or more? I think you should probably charge more than the other person because you're saving the client a week." And, um, you know, you're giving them quality work and uh, there's no point for you to charge less, basically. So that's mm -hmm. a point. Like, as long as people learn, okay, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm new. I'm just getting into this industry. I'm, I'm, I'm a student, you know, I work in the university. Like, I'm in the, going to the university or college to learn how to do video editing, character art or whatever, any sort of art, digital art, even traditional art. So maybe I can use Fiverr to make some money just to pay off my, you know, just to make some extra money to to pay my phone bill or my food or or enough money to have an income on the side, right? That's a side hustle. It's not a real business. That's mm -hmm. what I can say. If if it helps you to learn business, sure, because we all have to start somewhere, man. Like if my first job, if I didn't work for free, I probably my my life would change completely. So there's nothing wrong with that to work cheap or work free or use whatever platform you have. The only question is. You shouldn't settle, and you should, you know, push yourself to figure out, try other, uh, test other platforms as well. Test a new client and tell them, give them, give them a bigger price, right? When you do do the second project, client comes to you, hey, I worked on these two projects, and now I charge two hundred fifty dollars a day, and then you work with them uh, for five months, six months. Another client comes and they say, hey, what do you, how much do you charge for characters? Three hundred dollars a day, right? And then do this until you you get to the to the highest price possible, because mm -hmm. the the more and it's gonna take time obviously right if you want to charge like hundred eighty hundred ninety thousand dollars a year, or whatever, um, you have to uh, basically accumulate a lot of knowledge about the industry about the pipeline. So when the client gives you the work, it's it's you know without any trouble. They get what they want. They're happy with you. Because oftentimes, dude, this is the thing. It's it's hard to work on projects, right? It takes time, and the uh, majority of the clients they prefer to have hassle-free work. That's the number one key because everyone wants to meet their deadline. Shareholders mm -hmm. are going to keep hold them responsible. Why you didn't finish the project on time? Well, I mean, because we didn't have enough character artists, they would say, okay, why you didn't hire someone? You know what I mean? So there is there should be a balance. I mean. Um, as long as you can deliver the work, um, you should get paid what you deserve to get paid. No, that's, that 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 sounds like solid advice. You mentioned something that I want to touch upon, um, as far as artists, three D artists having confidence. Uh, so, what should um, artists do if they don't really have any confidence in their three D art? And I ask that question because um, not only uh, you know just subscribers of my channel, I, I read through the comments but also people that are in my group that I mentor, that I teach. Uh, usually that's an underlying theme where, you know, when I first reach out to them, they don't have that much confidence. And then, you know, as their skills grow, their, their confidence grows. But, you know, what, what what's your take on that? What do you tell your, your students um, about, uh, you know, just growing their confidence as a 3D artist? Test. 
test as much as you can. That's what I did. Yeah. You know, when I wanted to move out of my country, I had to email a bunch of companies. It didn't work. I had to try again. I had to ask a friend. I had to go there myself, find a way. That's all testing, right? Experience. I mean, it's it. You're not gonna get anything if you if you're always worried if you're scared of losing something. You know what I mean? So if you want to grow as an artist, you have to experiment new things as an artist when you do your art. Um, so I yeah, test is the key basically. So one of the things I can say, if you want to do art, uh, if you want to become a like, let's say a good character artist, just create your ideas as as fast as you can. You know, test different different forms, different shapes to to get out of your comfort zone. If you want to grow more in the industry, read more books, go watch some podcasts, talk to other professional artists, you know, be present on social media, make a post, read other, um, you know, maybe you can look at someone like Rafa Grassetti, right? Go check his post and see what he's doing that uh, that made him the person he is today, right? Go check his previous artwork. And I, I think testing is the key, man. Like when I look at my life, um, my life is based on test trial and error. I, I didn't go to school for anything. I, I left um, after high school, I stopped going to, I didn't go to college or anything like that, you know? And um, I think the real world is the real test. So even if you go to college, you're still not anywhere close to being in the industry because inside the industry, it's a different beast. And you need to be ready to, to punch and get punched. I, I don't mean like in an aggressive way. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> The way life works, right? You have to yeah. try out things, and um, uh, if an application doesn't work, try something else. If you applied for a company, they didn't reply to your email. Next company, change the way you send that, send them an email, right? If you did a form of character, it didn't work, change your design. Um, maybe next time, take a concept and do it based on that. Maybe try to design your own character. Maybe just design, like do completely a different character and then apply or I don't know like if you're in a studio if you're um, working already for a company and they're not paying you more money maybe it's time for you to change your job go to another studio work on a different project never get married to ideas you know uh, because ideas can change over time if that makes sense like it's nothing it's uh, everything becomes obsolete at some point everything comes to an end so you shouldn't be afraid of trying um, new ways, new methods, new way of making art, and and so on. No, you you you're definitely right. Everything kind of has a shelf life, right? Uh, yeah. Methods, software, techniques, everything evolves, especially technology that changes so quick. For you mentioned social media, and now you know with uh, sites like Instagram or platforms like Instagram, Facebooks. We have ArtStation. What are uh, maybe some marketing tips for you know up and coming 3D artists to really just get their eyeballs uh, on their more eyeballs and more traffic on their works? Um, being active, basically, you know, uh, discipline, um, consistency, right? Uh, you just need to do art, improve yourself, and uh, just practice as much as you can. One of the mistakes I see is um, people post something and they expect to get good feedback from everyone. And um, so what happens is like a lot of people give them good good impression. Oh, amazing work! You did it. everything. Is I saw a portfolio. The guy said I applied for a work for for a job and no one is responding to me. And he posted on Facebook. Someone like a couple of people messaged. I like gave him a comment and on the comment section they they told him. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with your portfolio. Just try more. That couldn't be far from the truth. Okay. So, um, I mean, some sometimes social media gives you the wrong impression because people don't want to hurt your feelings, if that makes sense. Which I yeah, think is no. wrong because you need to. You know how a samurai sword is made? It goes uh, through a lot of uh, pressure, heating, cooling down, hammering hundreds of times you know it, it you know it takes a long time to make a really good samurai sword i, I think with social media you you do get a skewed picture and sometimes yeah. you get those extremes right you get people that are you know just tell you uh you know they they kind of don't want to hurt your feelings and then you have the other side where they just are ruthless right 
and and they 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 tear you down, uh, especially when like a new artist, right? And, and they post their works. Uh, and, yeah, and but sometimes you know the reality is this. Sorry for cutting you. The reality is, um, as an artist, you know yourself where you stand. You know, you know if you're good enough or or very good or or average or above average. You know your level. So it's oftentimes it's like um, it's our ego that makes us to post something to get approval from others. Sometimes we are not ready to to listen to like others' opinion about feedback. Like basically, if mm -hmm. someone says, "Hey, your art sucks," that's fine. You know that you have to get in, you know you have to hear it somewhere to improve yourself because um, that's how we develop a, a better mindset. We get uh, tough like a samurai sword, you know. So I mean, uh, one of the things I tell my students is, if someone tells you your work is good, doubt it. You know, not doubt it in a in a, in a doubtful about yourself. Just mm -hmm. think twice. Okay, maybe this person is not saying something. Let me talk to someone else. Let me show it to someone else. I show my work to my wife when I work uh, on something, and she's like, "Oh, this is not good," or "This is good." What what's wrong with his ears? You know, and th it's the most honest feedback I get. And I'm like, okay, maybe I need to investigate more. Or when I make YouTube videos, I show it to my wife first, and then she's like, "You should change this part." She's brutal. Like. What the hell is this? Don't put this video. Or why? Why? What this? What is this character? Don't make this. It's it's bad. So I, I think I think too with like social media, there's there's this dynamic that you know sometimes somebody can create a piece of fan art, right? And they're they're kind of just liking it and commenting because they like the subject matter, and you know, and and not the work itself, right? If if you create something that's like uber popular, you know, like a fan art piece, maybe. Uh, as far as stylistically or technically, it's not the greatest piece, but people, and then I think what happens is other people see it's like, oh, well, this is working. Let, let me try to emulate that, right? So sometimes just social media can be funny as far as we, we get caught up in the likes, right? And, you know, seeing yeah. what gets gets traction and attention, but it's sometimes it doesn't mean that it's the best or most polished piece of artwork out there, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and you know the thing is, social media is great when you. Um, I don't like to say show off because that's not a good way. Uh, as soon as you let your ego to take over, that's the end. It's over. Everyone is going to notice it. No one is going to like you. To be honest, I think it should be about just presenting your work, showing your progress, and uh, getting in touch with new people. You know, finding new people in the industry or friends or someone who really wants to communicate with you. That's how I found a lot of my friends. That's how you, you found me, right? I, I On YouTube and then you were like, yeah, let's talk, let's chat, right? So that's how you make connections. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think um, being active is, is good on social media, uh, YouTube. I don't like Facebook. I use it because people are, like I wanted to close it. A lot of people messaged me, they said, don't don't close it. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep it open just for, for those who want to stay in touch on Facebook. But I don't like Facebook. I, I, I think Instagram and YouTube are the best platforms, especially Instagram because, uh, yeah, I mean, for, for our work. YouTube is great if you want to be, be on the camera, see your flaws and, uh, you know, talk and learn to speak better or make a different type of audience, right? And um, it's just a different platform. But I think it's important to to learn how to use social media. Being active on it is is, is good. Posting your working progress, you know, posting your final finalized artwork, and being consistent. Consistency consistency is the key, man. Like if you uh, keep doing it, you might not get any get any results, but eventually it's gonna start growing slowly. If that makes sense. No, totally. Uh, I I wanted to talk touch on a subject that's not the funnest to talk about. Uh, it's not really, uh, I would say, like the most popular to talk about. But I want to really talk about mental health and really just 3D artists overcome overcoming anxiety and depression. Uh, and you know, uh, I I know about Mike uh, Nash. He was a close friend of yours, and I'm yeah. sorry, just really for not only the the 3D artist community because he was a great guy and a great artist, yeah. um, but also you know on a personal level as far as your friend and then you know uh to to be honest like what made me want to reach out to you was kind of that connection through mike and you know like i told you earlier like mike did reach out to me and you know me and him never really got to have a proper conversation but you know when i actually heard that interview 
you know, it was like, man, me and Mike have a lot of things in common. And I, it wasn't even the artwork. It was just like the depression, the anxiety, yeah, and yeah, a true. lot of things that I experienced. And, you know, one of my earliest YouTube videos was talking about, you know, working out and, and kind of uh, beating or managing your anxiety and your depression. What are your thoughts on that in, for 3D artists that have struggled? You know, because I've struggled, Mike struggled, and I'm not sure, you know, what, um, I guess, what issues you've had along the way, but what uh, general advice can you give to artists that are maybe, um, you know, faced with uh, mental health, anxiety, or depression? You know, yeah, that's a very uh, hard subject because I'm not a psychologist, right? But I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about, about the anxiety, the stress. I mean, I, I lived in Iran. It was a lot of pressure. I was anxious. I was angry um, because of all the pressure. And uh, I didn't have money. I didn't know what's going to happen to me in the future. And now I look at my past. I'm like, damn, I, I this is weird. Like, if I saw myself at this time in the past, 15, 16 years ago, I would dream about to being here where I am now you know mm -hmm. and because I say this because I was anxious for for several reasons I, I, I wanted freedom I wanted to be with someone you know the, the person that I wanted to uh, I wanted to have a special person with me my wife is special to me you know she's the best uh, person in my life to be honest with you and I got all of it and it helped me to improve my uh, anxiety and stress and I, I had anxiety I know exactly how it feels like I was getting panic attacks, I was getting stressed, especially when I left uh, my country without money, you know, mm -hmm. figuring out how to stay alive or um, at some point I had to sleep in the street for like 10 days, you know, on the seaside basically. The only thing that kept me pushing is dreaming or wanting to change my life. You know, I couldn't let the anxiety or stress take over and push me down and because I have one chance to live, you know what I mean? One chance. So I told myself, and this is why, what I actually told Mike, he told me, I don't know how you keep doing this. I don't know how you, I'm like, Mike, that's why we, we, we got connected so easily because uh, we had similar roots. He, 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 he was like, his parents are originally from Middle East. He was originally from Middle East like me. Mm -hmm. And I, I understood him, he understood me. And I told him, Mike, look, here's the thing. I have one chance to live right? Only one chance to live. So I will do anything I can to live one day without any stress in my life. Just one day. Because I want to experience that one day and that's enough. If I can experience it one, like one time experience how it feels to not worry about anything, anything, deadline, work, debt, you know, buying crap, you know, living in a society where every, everyone is about, oh, look at me, see how cool I am, or, um, you know, trying to, I don't know, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not a healthy society. Everyone is trying to dominate each other. Everyone is trying to. It's, uh, uh, they, they have a right? term, uh, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, like you, yeah. you know, your, your, your neighbor buys, you know, a nice car and then, you yeah. know, you, you want to outdo him, so, so you, you over leverage your debt, you know, and, yeah, and you yeah. just buy that and, car just to show off, basically. Yep. And dude, like one of the things I learned, I'll talk about a couple of things about anxiety. Taking care of my financial situation changed my anxiety because um, I don't have to worry about money as much as I did in the past when I was younger. You know, I mm -hmm. don't want to ever be in that situation again. You know, you heard this. Um, I, I'm not rich, but I'm going to tell you, it, like, it's a phrase, it's good. It says, I, I was poor and I'm rich now. I prefer to be rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I, I'm not rich yet, but I don't want to be where I was 20 years ago, you know, yep. because it's way more anxious. Like I, I think about it now. I'm like, how, how did I do that? How, how did I live like that? It doesn't make sense. How can a human being adapt to a hard life like that? You know, and I, I, mine wasn't as hard, you know, I'm looking at others. I'm like, how did these people are living their lives in a situation like that, you know? And it's 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 hard. It's it's it creates anxiety, it creates stress. And um, for me, it was basically to uh, push forward and you know f get to to uh, to where I could actually live one day without anxiety, if that makes sense. And um, 
a lot of people give up give up fast because of pressure i have i have pressure on me now you know we all we always have pressure because we choose to you know improve our lives and and that's how you can do it you know you have to work you have to have side hustles you have to push so that that creates a lot of anxiety especially for us because constantly sitting in front of computer all the time this is not good we are human beings we are not made to sit yeah. that's why they they have these raising desks that's why I, I walk at home all the time like when i do something i work for like 30 minutes go walk just grab a tea or something mm -hmm. uh, we are not made to sit that that, that creates anxiety that creates a stressful life. It, this is from my experience. I'm not a psychologist, right? But um, put, I'll put another disclaimer, man. By, by yeah. the time this is over, <laughs> your, your face is going to be covered with like asterisks. And, oh, these uh, are the things that I was telling. Yeah, these are the things I was telling Mike. You know, um, and uh, his situation was was not as good. Like it was hard, very hard. You know. And uh, he, it was, he was changing. Unfortunately, the accident happened. He took, like, I, I know you, you watched the video. Mm -hmm. um, he took the wrong pill or I, I don't know if it was the wrong one, but whatever. Like the pill that he took built up in his liver and it co uh, collapsed his body at some point. And, um, you know, I don't think as human beings, you should push yourself so far to get to a point where you have to take pills to do art. You know what I mean? To, to I, calm I, I, yourself I, I, down. I think there's a lot of dynamics that are, in, I would say, with the field, the industry, and just being, like you said, at the end of the day in front of a computer, you know, so long. And, you know, to, to be a great artist, it's almost like you're at that, especially with Mike, you know, he was very driven and he... Yeah, he was amazing, stuff, man. He was very the unique. Stuff he, the, the, the stuff he pulled off, you know, is, is very, um, uh, very remarkable. And, yeah. you know, as an art, artist, you kind of like to be to that level, you kind of got to be on the edge of obsession, right? Of just yes. being all in and kind of you know having that, that focus. Yeah, if you can't put all in. And last time when we spoke, he was like, I told him, Mike, you need to do more of this. He said, I can't. It's hard. It's too. I'm like, why? He says, it, it takes time. No one sees it. Clients don't care. It was hard for him, right? Because he mm -hmm. loves his work so much. And whatever he did, um, Everyone wanted more. Or when he worked with a client, they were like, some a company hired him to do freelance work for them, contract work, and they hired him as a concept artist, three D concept artist to design a robot. And then they were giving him so much feedback that one day he called me. He was like frustrated and he was upset. He said, "They're not. They hired me to do this job because of my profession, and they're not letting me to finish this. And the contract is like this." If I if I stop it, I have to pay the money and blah 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 blah. It was a, it was a bad situation, and I'm like Mike, just stop it, cancel it. They don't need you. They just want someone who can do production work, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They just picked you, they picked the wrong person. You know, when when if you're if you work with the right client, um, that's what I'm trying to say. It becomes life becomes better. You know, if you if you value your work so much. Man, and, and, and there's like a word that, that you know, we, we kind of just said, uh, perfectionism. So what's your yeah. take on perfectionism uh, for artists? Is it, you know, some people look at it as like a bad thing. Some people have even said there's no it's perfectionism. a lack of confidence. No, what and, is perfect? What is perfect? Tell me what is perfect. <laughs> but, but, you know, with, with 3D artists, it, it's there, there's a rule. It's called the 80-20 uh, rule, if, if I'm not yes, uh, yes. destroying this. Right, and it's like if you get it to eighty percent, that that should be okay. Or you could spend the next, uh, you know, like a lot more time on that twenty percent. Um, but it, it just you're gonna get diminishing returns as far as the time that you sometimes invest. Sometimes it's yeah, sometimes it's ego. Sometimes I work with good art directors and bad art directors. Sometimes it doesn't have any effect on the result of the, the outcome of the product that you're trying to make. Zero effect. Mm -hmm. And it's just this person wants to try to make it perfect. What is perfect? Define perfect. There's no way to define perfect because you might say perfect to me is whatever, this design. To me, it's not perfect. Perfect is something mm -hmm. else. Perfect is subjective, right? Depends on the person, depends on the project. There's no perfect. It's just a it's just a rabbit hole. It's just, just a dark hole that you get into, you know, and you try to f go after something that doesn't exist because there's no limit to it you can't say this is perfect when you get here 
So, so let, let, let me give you two perfect examples. Not not only you're you're you know a talented 3D artist, character artist, but you also make you know content online. Um, so you know you you work on content across the board in, in different you know fields. Um, so when when do you just stop? When do you, when is it good enough, right? Because we can you know working on that likeness or that character, and we got to get those pores right or that yeah, eye yeah. perfect, that not right, or even the YouTube video, right? And, and you have very good production value. I, I told you that too, right? Thanks, for man. for your content. So you know, Thank like you. Where, where where do you kind of draw that line, like you know, and find that balance of? That's a very good question, by the way. That's a very good question because you can't define it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. My students ask me, when should I start posing my character? I tell them now. They're like, okay, I didn't <laughs> make the arms. I'm like, when do you feel comfortable doing it? He's mm -hmm. like, okay, so maybe I should make the arm, make the hand, make the face, and then do that. I'm like, okay, so do it by then. There is no there is no real uh, defining line to stop, right? I stop when I feel like I'm done, when I feel like not motivated anymore to work on something, when I feel like, okay, I'm I'm. Um, I finished this character, it looks good, textured, it's a game, and what else can I do on it? Nothing. Add more details. Is it going to help any with anything? This character is jumping around in game, or there's a lot of motion blur, or it's like from far distance, right? I can't, maybe I can't do anything to make it better, right? So um, I, I stop usually, I can tell you there's a moment, and this comes with practice, doing more and more and more. Over time, you just realize, okay, this is when I should have stopped working on this it just feels like that and one of the things I, I tell my students or everyone and by the way I'm not in a place to, to give advice to anyone but I'm just saying based on my experience you know mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I say is um, doing more is better than doing perfect because um, when you do more like you said my YouTube production is good right uh, I'll send you my first video to check it out it wasn't good but what I did every video that I made I tried one new thing one more thing the same thing with designing characters every time i make a character i test one new thing i don't mm -hmm. want to like test 200 things just one and imagine like after two years or after five years how much um knowledge i can accumulate you know it's a it's the game of compounding this is what people need to understand uh, my students tell me okay how can i make and make uh, a face i'm like what is a face made of eyes ears um Human skull, you know, the, the skull, jaw, teeth, lips, and so on. So just make each part separately, right? And figure out how you can make it. Establish a st specific way of doing it. And then your brain picks up those. Um, when you sculpt, your brain picks it up. When you play piano, your brain is constantly working. And then when you go to sleep, your brain is actually solidifying everything when you're hibernating, basically, because your all the energy is is preserved right your body is not moving you're not watching anything you're not listening to anything and your brain is in the best um situation possible it takes like recharges and saves a lot of energy and and that time actually the human brain is is solidifying the information that you're giving to your brain so the maximum learning time i think i read somewhere is like between three and a half or four hours a day if you're learning a new skill Right, mm -hmm. and then you need to give yourself time. Go, go to sleep. You know, enjoy your sleeping time. Don't stress. Don't worry about it because you can't do anything when you're sleeping. And uh, let it uh, sink in. Let it um, let your body, you know, absorb and solidify all those neurons, new neuron path ways, basically to to solidify that information. Right, and then mm -hmm. when you do that, right, when you learn how to make lips, learn how to make nose, learn how to make the whole face and so on, you improve over time and uh, eventually you will understand when is the time to stop. Usually I, I just push, if it's a personal project because of trying new things, once I try the first thing that I, like the new thing that I wanted to try, I learn a new skill and then I just, uh, you know, finish off the character. Because um, the only way for me to improve is like moving to the next one, you mm -hmm. know learn more and more and more and then doing more uh, is going to help you to to become better and eventually you'll learn when to stop you know and for client work obviously is when when i do something they they approve it that's it i mean i don't need to do more than that obviously i i do my best to make it as good as possible right mm -hmm. but uh but at the end of the day it's it's the work that the client wants 
and they are the ones that deciding if this is good enough or not. If they give me feedback, I'll just adjust it more, and I'll put more effort into it to make it better. If that makes sense. No, it, it totally always makes sense. sense. Yeah, and, and I always try to go beyond what the client wants. I think it's good to 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 do more than what you can do, but you, mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't come at, at you know you shouldn't basically exhaust your um, yeah, you know, it shouldn't create the stress or anxiety for you, if that makes sense. No, that 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 totally makes sense. So you you mentioned uh, client work, uh, character work, which you're currently doing. We talked about you know your your YouTube channel, which is you know something that that you also do. So what other projects um, do you have going? You're a very busy man, by the way. <laughs> uh, but what uh, what other projects uh, do you have going on? Uh, cooking in the background oh. that, uh, that you know maybe my my audience might be interested in up uh, for projects it's not a pro i mean I, I try to do as much as i can you know depends mm -hmm. on the day my schedule is not exactly set i, I try to make a set a schedule but it doesn't work you know I, now, now, I'm, now i'm trying to you know <laughs> I, I i i i laugh because i'm i'm the same way yeah. I, I bought this app i i planned everything <laughs> And then like everything's overdue and I'm getting all these notifications like I oh, even do squat this week that you put here. Yeah, yeah not always. Funny. It doesn't. But but what you know what I learned? I learned if I introduce a new thing slowly and create a mm -hmm. habit, then it's going to work. Now YouTube is part of my habit, creating videos, interviewing people. And it's mm -hmm. not it's not uh, it's kind of becoming effortless. I don't have to push mm -hmm. to do anything like oh maybe I should do it this way. No. I just go with the flow and and do it and um improve over time it happens right mm -hmm. just, in the beginning i had to put more effort into it and then slowly i got better at, at, at it i made a better setup to make it easier switch everything and record so i don't have to mm -hmm. I, I don't have to think about the technical stuff but um yeah so i do youtube i teach uh basically i do mentorship classes and um i'm working on a game project i play piano i i don't um have much time to read physical books these days, uh, so I listen to audio books. But I, I um, that was one of the habits that I created. But because I added some more stuff to my schedule, that is something that uh, uh, I'm trying to get back to it again to to read more physical books. Actually, I was reading a summary book because I'm teaching a summary workshop. <laughs> cool. That yeah, you know, research in all levels is is you know it's it's crazy how deep. Uh, us, you know, 3D artists have to sometimes get into uh, yeah. just making an asset, right? Just from the the visual and sometimes even the, the the story itself, right? And just get that that background knowledge. But uh, we've been rocking for you know well over an hour and a half now, man. Oh wow! Uh, I really, I really, really appreciate your time. Uh, you know, getting on here and just sharing your wealth of wisdom uh, of you as a character artist and Thanks. just being in the uh, you know 3D industry. For so many years, um, so uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, and what, what I'll do for my audience is I'll go ahead and actually link down below um, where they could actually see your work. And if they're interested in maybe uh, your mentorship program, I'll also link that um, because you know you're you're like I said, man, you're awesome. Just part of the community, and you definitely bring just a, uh, a breath of fresh air. Uh, the things that you talk about. Uh, I, I really kind of see eye to eye on a lot of things that you talk about, especially empowering uh, 3D artists, because, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like 3D artists don't have a lot of superheroes and the fact of like representing them, right, and fighting for them and just being their voice. And, and I think you articulate and you speak very well for Thanks, the man. community and you kind of have their, their uh, our best interest in mind when, when you speak and create content. So really appreciate everything. Your time, your thoughts, your wisdom. Uh, so just thank you very much. Uh, any, anything that you um, want to say before you get off there? No, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. It was a great pleasure. We were planning to do this and finally did it. <laughs> That's great. And if yeah, uh, you, your audience you have any questions, <laughs> <laughs> yes. if they have any questions, they can reach out to me or uh, put it in the comments. I'm, I'm gonna try to respond. Anything I can help, I'm more than happy to to do it. All right. Well, uh, appreciate your time, brother. And for Thanks, the folks man. at home, I'll catch you guys next time. Subscribe to his channel. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>